Okay, welcome to Key Area 1.7, which is photosynthesis. This is an introduction video on photosynthesis. And what I'm going to do in this is just do a bit of a recap about things that you already maybe know about photosynthesis. And then we're going to go on and have a look at how we can test whether photosynthesis has happened or not. There's another two videos because this one is kind of a basic introduction. The second video that you'll be watching is really looking at the steps in photosynthesis uh, in more detail than you've probably done before. And then the third one is going to be looking at what sort of things affect photosynthesis. That is what sort of things limit photosynthesis. And we'll be doing that and looking at some possible investigations that are involved around that and kind of exam questions that come up round about this kind of area. So a wee bit of a recap of, of what you probably already know. You probably already know that plants make um, food from light and that process is called photosynthesis. What the plant is doing is combining simple substances to make carbohydrates such as glucose and then the glucose gets joined together and made into a larger molecule called starch. Photosynthesis is carried out in the leaves of a plant and I've just split the word here photosynthesis up so we've got here, we've got the word um, photo for light and synthesis, meaning to build up. So what we're really seeing here is that photosynthesis is the process of using light to build up something. And what we're building up is the glucose molecule. Now, some things to kind of think of in the background when you're thinking of photosynthesis. The sun sunlight that's involved in photosynthesis is, it is what gives the plant the energy to make the food. So it, prov it provides the energy for uh, driving the chemical reaction that is happening in the starting process of photosynthesis. And we'll have a we look at that in further detail when we look at the next video. You also need to think of photosynthesis has got lots and lots and lots of steps in it. There's all sorts of things, substances, one substance being changed to another and then to another and to another and so on and things being broken apart, things being joined together and such like. Now all of these stages are all controlled by enzymes. You remember from our last topic when we've been studying enzymes, they help to speed up chemical reactions and without them um, photosynthesis wouldn't happen and we wouldn't have any food. These enzymes all help in the chemical reactions and you need to remember that so that anything that affects enzymes will affect the process of photosynthesis. Now the light energy is trapped by chlorophyll and chlorophyll is a green pigment, it's the green colour in your plant and it's found in structures called chloroplasts in the green leaves. The light energy that is provided by the sun is said to be converted into chemical energy. You sometimes see questions like that. What is the light energy converted into? And what they're talking about is it's converted into chemical energy. In other words, it's converted into glucose, which is chemical energy. A wee bit of a recap for you, or maybe this is new, looking at carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are, that's what glucose is, and so is starch. Now the glucose that is made is sometimes used immediately by the plant in the process of respiration. It's the next topic we're going to be looking at. But the plant may not want need to use that glucose at the time, so it wants to store it. The thing about glucose is it's a very small and it's a soluble molecule. It will it will dissolve in water, and so it could diffuse out of the plant. And the plant's gone to all the bother of making that glucose. Why would it want to lose it when it starts to rain? So what it does is it changes it into starch, which is a very large and, ve and an insoluble molecule. So it can store it there until it's ready to use it, and then it will break it down uh, into glucose and then use it for energy. Now, glucose and starch are both carbohydrates. And when we're talking about carbohydrates, we're talking about the elements carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And when we come on to have a look at the word equation of photosynthesis, You'll see carbon dioxide, so you'll see carbon, uh, you'll see water, you'll see um, hydrogen, all contained all within this to, in making a, um, carbon dioxide, uh, sorry, making glucose. So this is a photosynthesis word equation up here, where we take carbon dioxide, we combine it with water, and we need light energy for that, and we need chlorophyll. 
and that process makes glucose and also as well oxygen is produced in the process. Now that's actually a waste product in the process of photosynthesis, although the plant actually will use it for respiration sometimes or it diffuses out the plant and then we use it and it helps to maintain all life on the planet so it's a pretty fundamental process this not only do we get all our food from the process of photosynthesis but we also get the, ox the very oxygen that we breathe. Down below here you'll see that below the word equation we've got the chemical equation and you'll see it's all balanced out here. We've got six carbon dioxides combined with six hydrogen, uh, six waters, sorry, and they combine to form this molecule, this carbohydrate glucose. You'll see it's got carbon, six carbons, 12 hydrogens, and six oxygens. And then we lose oxygen here as well from the process, which just diffuses out of the leaves. These are known as our raw materials over here, our carbon dioxide and our water. And also necessary for photosynthesis are light energy and chlorophyll. And these over here are our products. Now what I've done here is I've just summarised this process then in a diagram, which is really our sun here giving light. That light energy gets trapped in the chlorophyll and at higher we have a look in more detail at the chlorophyll and all the wee different pigments that are contained in there and separate them out. But at the moment, all you need to know is um, about chlorophyll that's inside the chloroplasts. Uh, traps the sunlight. Water comes up through from the roots, is absorbed up, comes into the leaves, and it is used in the process. And carbon dioxide actually di um, moves, diffuses into the leaf from the air outside. It enters in, in the underside of the leaf from little pores. And these little pores or little holes are called stomata. And we look at those in more detail in the next unit of work. And so the carbon dioxide diffuses in there. A process all takes place. Sugar is formed in the, well, glucose is formed. That is then converted to starch and oxygen is given off into the air. Now the starch there can be stored in other plants, parts of the plant or it can be stored in the leaf, depending on what the plant decides to do with it. You need to remember that starch can turn iodine from a brown colour to a dark blue-black colour, and that is important when we come on to have a look at this. That is investigating the conditions needed for photosynthesis. Now what we mean by that there is, is carrying out various tests, and we're going to have a look at some of them, because these kind of things sometimes come up in exam questions. It's carrying out various tests, looking at whether we need light for photosynthesis, do we need carbon dioxide for photosynthesis, um, and we, we can do various tests to see whether these things are needed, is chlorophyll needed and so on. So I'll run through some of these uh, as, as, as examples because they may come up in exam questions. But first of all, we need to have a wee look at, well, how can we have a look and see if a plant is photosynthesizing. Well, we can do that by testing to see if starch is formed in the leaf. What we can do is we can take a plant, we can leave it in the dark for a few days to de-starch the plant, because what will happen is if we sit it in the dark for a bit, then all the glucose will get used up and then the plant will start to use up the starch. It will break that down. So the leaves won't have any starch in it. And then we can take it out and put it into different conditions and see if starch is formed in the leaf. But first of all, we need to test or know how we're going to test a plant for starch being formed in it. And there's a very simple way of doing that. We can test the leaf with iodine solution. But our first problem is that our leaf is green and the iodine solution is this kind of brown color. We know it turned a blue black if starch is there, but that's kind of pretty hard to see when we've got all that chlorophyll there. So what we do first of all is we remove all that green colour and we do that by just basically boiling the leaf in boiling water. You'll see here it's sitting on top of a Brunson burner. I usually do this in a very hot water bath because um, it's safer to do it that way. And then you switch off the Brunson burner because you're about to use something that's pretty inflammable. It's called ethanol and that's an alcohol 
and if you poured that into the test tube while you had your Bunsen burner on then it would certainly give you a new hairdo and possibly um, uh, take your eyebrows off or whatever. So you want to switch the Bunsen burner off, you stick your leaf into your ethanol and the ethanol actually removes the green colour from the leaf. Once you've had your leaf in your ethanol and you've removed all the chlorophyll from it, you would then rinse it in warm water and that softens it up. And then you would add your iodine solution to it and test it for starch. So it's important that you just know things like the leaf is boiled to remove the, the waxy surface from it and to burst open the cells. And the ethanol is used for the chlorophyll to dissolve out into it. Once you've tested it with iodine, you'd get this sort of result here and this slide here. So when you have a look over at the leaf over on whoops, this side here, that one there is one that is tested for starch. It's got all this blue black color to it. This one that's over here has been one that's been de-starched and then it's probably not been placed in the light. So there's not as much starch that's been formed in it. You've got some black color in the center here but it's nothing like what it looks it looks like over on the other side now once you know then how to test for the presence of starch you can go on and you can test your plant in various conditions so you've de-starched your plant and then you would do something like say this experiment that's here you would take your plant and one of the leaves that's here You'll see this leaf here, it's covered with a strip of aluminium foil over it on this part here. So you would leave your plant in the light and then you would take this leaf and you would test it for the presence of starch. And what you would find, there's a wee triangle that's been cut out in the middle here as well. And what you would find is that all these areas here that haven't been covered up, including the wee triangle in the middle here, will all test positive for starch. But this strip here that was covering it, and so the light couldn't get in at it, that area there will stay the same brown colour for the, with the iodine. So this here would be an investigation that's testing for that light is necessary for photosynthesis to happen. And the same sort of kind of test can be done, but this time investigating for that carbon dioxide is needed for photosynthesis. So in this example here, what has happened is you've got your plant that's been de-starched, left in the dark for 24 or 48 hours. Then it's brought out into the light. There's this polystyrene, uh, plastic bag, sorry, that's been put over it and secured with an elastic band. And then some substance, in this case here, is something called sodium hydroxide. But this is a substance that will remove all the carbon dioxide from the air that is there and you would leave it there in the light and wait and then test one of the leaves for the presence of starch and of course there's no carbon dioxide so it should be when you test it for the presence of starch you'll get <clears throat> excuse me that there is no starch present in the leaf Another experiment that's done is this one here. It's looking at what is called a variegated leaf. Now that is like this sort of type of leaf that is down here. That is a leaf that has only got chlorophyll in the sort of middle part of the leaf. And again, that is tested for the presence of, of <coughs> excuse me, starch. And here's the leaf beforehand. And when it's pres tested, with iodine it's been boiled and then um, it's been put in the ethanol and then it's tested for the presence of starch you find that it's just this area in here that tests positive for starch being present and this experiment is proving that chlorophyll is needed for photosynthesis and that is what all these experiments are all, all revolving around they're looking to see is light definitely needed for photosynthesis is chlorophyll definitely needed for photosynthesis? Is carbon dioxide needed for photosynthesis? And each of these experiments are showing that. So it's a good idea in your notes just to have a wee summary of each of these experiments because they may come up in an exam question. 
Now, there are other ways of testing for um, photosynthesis happening, and we will go on to have a look at um, some more of these when we look at limiting factors of photosynthesis. But one way or another way of testing for photosynthesis, where you're not looking at the, the presence of starch in a leaf, but you're maybe looking at using something here, which is called an oxygen probe. And here's the probe here, and it will measure. You can stick your plant into this bottle that's here, and then you can measure how much oxygen is giving out, given out by the plant. And that will give you an indication of how much photosynthesis is happening. If you've not got something quite as high tech as that, you can do this sort of experiment that's here. And what you've got here is a, it's a water plant. And it's in here, it's in some bicarbonate, which is giving it carbon dioxide. You've got light here and you'll get bubbles of oxygen being given off. And if you count these, that gives you an idea of how much photosynthesis is happening and we will do an experiment I think you did experiments like this in second year but we'll do an experiment like that when we come on to looking at limiting factors. Another way of measuring how much photosynthesis is happening is to use an indicator and this one that is here is called hydrocarbonate indicator or hydrogen carbonate indicator sorry or sometimes called bicarbonate indicator and it's used to measure how much carbon dioxide is being produced when um, it's got carbon dioxide levels equivalent to what is in the atmosphere, the indicator looks this red colour. But if the carbon dioxide levels start to increase, in other words, more carbon dioxide is being produced, then the indicator turns this yellow colour. If, on the other hand, carbon dioxide is being used up, then the indicator will turn this purple colour. So if you've got a lot of photosynthesis happening and you're using up a lot of carbon dioxide, the indicator will turn this sort of colour. If on the other hand, say the plant is in the dark and you've got it in this carbon hydro, hydrogen carbonate indicator, then it will turn this yellow colour. And these experiments can be done as well using this kind of plant that is up here um, either a, a plant called Elodia or a plant called Kabomba and we can go on and have a look at these experiments as well later on when we're looking at limiting factors. So that's the end of your introduction to photosynthesis and some of the experiments that come round about it.